Welcome, everybody. Jason Burton joined with Jordan Jones. Uh, we are back for another episode of High and Tight. Um, today, we're going to talk about a high school sneak peek, a too early look. I know it's October, October 2nd, um, but we're going to take a look at the East or 757 or Beach or whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're going to take a look at the top 10 along with a few other uh, honorable mention uh, teams, and we're going to preview some of the high school baseball upcoming in the spring of 2025. Okay, let's do this thing. All right, Jordan, coming off of a, a you know, what was a pretty crazy weekend. Uh, that actually turned into a pretty light weekend. Um, any, uh, any, you recuperating? Like, how you feeling? We got two weekends left. What, uh, what, what do you got going on this week? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to recharge the batteries a little bit. You know, the weather's been down, keeping us down. You know, it's tough to play baseball in the rain. Um, but I mean, looking forward to getting back to it and finishing off this fall strong. Hey, God made turf for a reason. <laughs> Turf for a reason. Long live turf fields. All right. Uh, we are going to dive into the East Top 10. Uh, we are going to start it off with our honorable mention teams. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to list these teams out. We're not going to go into a ton of depth player wise and stuff like that with those five teams. Um, and I'm just going to go through them alphabetically. Uh, we have Atlantic Shores Christian Seahawks from Vista Division 2. Uh, they were 19, 11, and 1 last year. Jordan, give me a strength and uh, a, a weakness, if you will, or something that they need to show that they can uh, that they can take care of. Well, obviously, they have a frontline arm in uh, Patrick Dudley, and um, he has some of the best stuff um, in the area. So he'll be able to be an arm to keep them in those close, tight games, give them a chance to win against those very uh, tough, strong teams down in the area. Um, so that's a real positive for them. Um, it's just one of the uh, weaknesses I think that they have is just the uh, depth that they have in the offense. A lot of there's some talent up at the top and middle of that or, uh, order, but um, I mean you have to get those guys in, right? Um, so I just think uh, some run production as you go down in the lineup is going to be a question mark for them um, in the spring. For sure. I, I mean, I kind of agree with that uh, for the most part. I think the consistency of those arms. Like there's no doubt that they have some talents at arms, but the consistency of outings, right? Because as you said, like if, if, if offensive depth is a question, you can't, you can't like, because those arms or that arm is going to throw versus in the big games versus the big teams, you know, uh, Dudley and Beasley are going to throw those games. And usually those teams are going to have good offense. So, can't be a night off. Got to be locked in, dialed in. Got to be efficient, right, to be able to get deeper into the game, to take some of the weight off of the offense and take some of the weight off of Beasley to allow him to stay at short or stay in the infield a little bit longer. Um, the other thing that I would say, like, question mark-wise, is, like, just making sure uh, they play clean, clean baseball. Um, so – all right, moving on. Next team, Grafton. The Grafton Clippers, VHSL Class 3, made a little playoff run last year. Um, finished 13-10 and 10 last year. They return a lot. Uh, Jordan, I know you got to see them. I don't think I got to see Grafton last year. I think I saw them the year before. Um, what would uh, what would you say? Um, I do think they return some uh, mound depth that can be very useful as they go on through the uh, season. Um, like Luke Wills, both of the Williams, uh, Corey Overmeyer. Like those are four arms that be able to compete and keep them in games and give them a chance to win each time out. Um, I do think uh, one thing to keep an eye out on is just the uh, offense. Uh, again, like they have some guys at the top of the lineup to do some things. Um, Overmeyer impacts the baseball men of that lineup. Um, Sandiford, Evan Cruyer, like those guys can make things happen throughout that lineup. 
Um, but as you go down into that lineup, hey, um, what we're going to do to manufacture some more runs for these arms that they are going to go out for us. So that is something to keep an eye on. All right, next team, the Hickory Hawks. VHSL Class 5 finished 12-8-1. and one. I got a chance to see Hickory last year, uh, I think a couple times. Um, you know, I think the big thing is they return some arm depth on the mound. Uh, they return... Uh, Jake Cozart, Tommy Blackburn, um, Ryan Kennedy may throw some for them as well. Uh, is Ryan Barks back and healthy um, after after some time on the shelf? Uh, so they have some arm depth. I think the question mark, they, they lose their starting catcher. Uh, they have to fill that spot. They have some offense up at the top, similar to some other teams, um, but the offensive depth throughout, they lost some senior offensive production from last year. Um, so I think there's some question marks, uh, dealing with positional things and offense, um, that they'll have to get figured out, but they do have one of the best bats in the beach with Braden Bachman. Uh, they have a returning shortstop and Eli Kraft. Um, so they have some pieces to build around and they have some arm depth, uh, but the offense and, and I think the catching position are some things that need answered. Uh, New Kent, the New Kent Trojans, VHSO Class 3, finished 17 and 5. I think Jordan and I both got a chance to see them last year. Um, losing, I think we would both agree, losing Carson Seeley is big. Um, but they return a lot. They return a lot from that team. Um, they'll need to continue to build on the pitching depth. Uh, they have a really nice mixture, I think, of, of young and old. Um, you know, I, I think that, uh, Boyette is, has spent the majority of his time behind the plate. If they could potentially move him out of there and, and get him on the mound a little bit more, I know they have some catchers coming up in the class behind him. Um, or actually might, is the same class. It's yeah. The class. They have some in the same class. And behind yeah. So, uh, if they can move him out of there and get him on the mound a little bit more and keep that arm fresh and. He'll add to the pitching depth. Um, Jordan, what's a question mark for you? Uh, just for me is I just think that finding that those arms that can, you know, step up in a big moment because Carson Seeley, he was that guy. If you needed a shutdown in, come in, he'll come in from the outfield and uh, he'll get you some out. So having an arm that can do that kind of replace what Seeley did, especially in the outfield and then on the mound, I think that's going to be a question mark uh, for me. This is a team that is that is trending up. I know we've talked about it before, but it is trending up not just this year, but in the future. There is some talent coming through, some young talent, and that's going to be an exciting group to watch the next couple of years. Um, our fifth and final honorable mention team, the Norfolk Academy Bulldogs, Vista Division One, seventeen and eight last year, had a really solid season. Uh, they return some of the arm talent. Uh, you have C.J. Murray, Sam Light, uh, Coddington. They return their catcher in Peter Galeados. Uh, Davis Stedman, Jed Creedon, who was a freshman last year, he returns. Um, they lost some positional and offensive uh, production from last year's team, uh, specifically in the front half of that order. Um, so I think – I think they'll be okay on the mound. I think they'll be fine on the mound. Um, I think sure up the middle infield and uh, figure out how to replace some of that offensive depth. But they're going to be, you know, they're going to be a little bit older um, with with Coddington and Murray and Galeados being seniors. Um, you know, and some of those young guys getting some experience last year. Uh, but that's a team that I could see making another deep run, um, whether it be the uh, – what is it? The T I T I S. Is that right? Yeah. Um, uh, I probably butchered that, but the, uh, the private school um, district down at the beach are one of. Um, so yeah, Norfolk Academy comes in as our fifth honorable mention team. Now we are going to move to number 10. Okay. Now remember these rankings obviously are really early. Uh, it doesn't always it, – it, sometimes it does factor in transfers that we know about. Sometimes there's some transfers that we don't know about. 
Sometimes there's some injuries that we are aware of, and sometimes there's some injuries that we aren't aware of. Um, so it's early. Um, take it for what it's worth. Uh, give this, you know, make this your bulletin board material if you want to. Um, but just uh, just trying to get a little head start on some high school stuff and, and start to build a little steam as we as we approach the high school season. I mean, again, it's October 2nd. So what are we, 4, 8, 12, like 20 weeks out? Um, so it'll be here before you know it. Uh, but we're going to start off at number 10 with the VISA Division Three powerhouse, perennial powerhouse, Walsingham Trojans. Um, they finished 24-8 and eight last year. They won their umpteenth VISA Division Three title in a row. Um, they returned their frontline arm and Matthew Swanson. Uh, they have Cole and Anthony Ferry, and uh, they have some new faces coming from some other places. Yep. You like that, don't you? You like that. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Gunterberg. Um, so they have some returning talent. They have some new talent. Uh, Jordan, what do you think? What, what do you think they need uh, to figure out? to kind of keep that trend going like they have Vista division three and just across. I mean, they, they were one of the few teams last year to beat Miller school. They beat Benedictine. They had some really quality wins last year. <clears throat> what do they need to replace from last year uh, to continue what they, uh, what they have going on in, uh, in Williamsburg? I think the one thing that is going to, be different for them is they won't have – I don't think they have too many guys that will be able to run the ball out the yard as consistently as Luke Harlow did or Sean Souza did. So you're going to have to find those power bats, um, those run production guys. Like I think they're going to be able to hit, but in terms of just extra base hits and things like that to change the game quickly, I think they need to find those guys to uh, produce some runs for Swanson or whoever else is on the mound at the time. For sure. Um yeah, they lost. I mean, they lost a, a good amount of offense. I mean, honestly, just with Harlow, Souza, and Aiden Evans, um, just those three. I mean, that was a pretty pretty significant. And then uh, Schultz was their catcher for whew, what three years. Um, so they've they've turned over quite a bit of talent in the past two years out of that program. Um, but the beat goes on. Uh, I heard and heard they got a new face from. Uh, from a couple of states south of us. We got a chance to see him this past weekend. Um, we don't like to dive into a ton of, of new guys unless we are 100% certain um, that they're going to be contributors. I feel pretty confident that he is, um, along with a, with a transfer and reclass. But, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's move to number nine, the Great Bridge Wildcats, VHSL Class 5, 19-3. And Phenomenal year last year. Um, you know, honestly, I think they just kind of, they ran into a buzzsaw, uh, that was ocean lakes there at the end of the year. Um, they, they ran into that ocean lakes dolphins buzzsaw and, uh, it just honestly just wasn't, it wasn't Dawson Newman's day. Um, and you know, that's not any knock on him because I don't know if there were many other arms in this state that had the year that he did. Uh, absolutely phenomenal all year long. Um, down at Coastal Carolina now, uh, I think you're going to see some big things from him. I think they're pretty excited about what they what they have out of Dawson. Um, but obviously, that's a that's a big one to replace. That's a lot of innings, a lot of quality innings. Um, they lost their center fielder, uh, lost a few other pieces. Jordan, what do you think? Give me give me positive and then the the figure out part um well the positive is they have one of the top hitters in this uh in the region um casey kadire um he comes back and i think he's gonna be a very huge piece for them um brody comparto as well andrew griffin those guys can be guys that have been in the lineup for a while now um so there'll be some offense production still there it needs to be filled with also losing newman and uh but i mean I think the offense is going to be there. And, I mean, obviously you lose Dawson them on the mound, so you're going to have to figure that out. Um, but I'm not not a bad arm to fill that in with Colson. So uh, I think those are two things to look out for for Great Bridge this year. 
Yeah, Adam Bartley, Trey Burton, Tristan Cheek, Cole Cinnamon, Brody Comparto, Casey Kadair, Andrew Griffin. So they have some returning pieces. Um, Cole's older brother, Caden Cinnamon, who's a 26. See how he factors in uh, to this team. But like you said, they have some pieces. Um, I think it's, you know, a lot of it is replacing the production that Dawson Newman brought. Um, Casey is, is capable of throwing some innings for them, but then you take him off a short. That leaves a void there. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that uh, they, they have the pieces. There's a few things to figure out, you know, on the mound wise. Uh, moving to number eight, Princess and Cavaliers, VHSL Class 5, 16 and 6. Uh, congratulations to Walt Clevinger. Uh, just announced his commitment. Um, I would I would venture out to guess Jordan. That's going to be their front line arm this year. Yeah, I would I would say so. Um, and Clevinger has taken some steps, obviously, from last spring throughout the summer. Um, so he's going to be asked to be a big role, um, big innings guy for them this spring. Um, but I mean, they do return a lot of their offense as well. Xavier Dune, Aiden McKeating, Matthew Matheny, Reed Vandergriff. Like these are proven guys that have uh, been strong in the lineup last year, and they're going to be asked to take on an even bigger role this year. So those are guys that um, are going to be ready to take that challenge and uh, give them a run for the spring. Yeah, Clevenger adds to the wealth of wealth of talent at Lynchburg that they have coming out of that twenty five class. Um, I, I love the pieces on that team, uh, Dune and McKeating. McKeating has been just absolutely red hot. Um, you have experience. You have some offense. You have some athleticism. Um, I think I think just arm depth. They got to figure out. Like Clevenger has to be consistent, has to be able to get deeper into games in those big games that they play. But on those two-game weeks, you know, where it's two tough matchups, they're going to have to figure out who's coming in behind him. Um, Lanstown, the Lanstown Eagles, VHSL Class 6. Lanstown comes in at number 7, 15 and 6. All right, now I'm going to take the lead on this one. This is, this is, my, this is my floor ceiling team uh, in terms of I think that this team has the biggest gap in terms of floor ceiling. Uh, and I think that this team could be really, really good. I think they could have been really, really good last year. It was, it was, it was kind of Jekyll and Hyde. Um, they have arm talent. They have offensive talent. They have athleticism. Um, they have some guys who, you know, when you get off the bus or work out or whatever, like, they're going to show. They're going to show really well. Um, but I don't think it's gotten put – it's gotten gotten all put together uh, at times, you know, kind of kind of when the lights come on. Um, Trey Campos and, and George Chevalier are their two frontline arms. Uh, they have to be efficient. They have to be consistent. They have to get deeper into games, right? You got that big game or you got a two-game week. It makes it really, really tough when an arm isn't getting out of the second or third, and then we're really chewing into the depth of a pitching staff, right? And a high school pitching staff is usually the 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 thing is when you when you see that horse, you chase them early, you're in business, right? Because I mean we're not talking about an SEC bullpen right. or ACC bullpen usually. Um, there, there are a few teams in the state once you get, you know, into the third and fourth arm of a week that are going to be really, really quality. Um, so, I mean, they have offensive talent. Kyle Flora, obviously Campos and Chevalier do their co contributions on the offensive side as well. Kyle Flora, Colin Kim, Cam Tellefson, um, they, they have firepower. They have, they have quality, you know, stuff on the mound. And they have firepower on the offensive side. Straight up, the question is figuring it out. Figuring it out and getting it done. Like they, as far as on paper, they out talent pretty much every, almost everybody in the 757 on paper. 
and a lot of teams in the state. Can they kind of get over that hump, right? Again, that's my floor ceiling team. Um, Jordan, anything to add on there? I mean, no, just like like you said, if they put it together, they can be one of the most dangerous teams in the beach. Um, I think the talent is undeniable, it's just the consistency and just putting together. Um, and if they can do that, they can make a really big run uh, down there in the second five. All right, moving to number six, Western Branch Bruins, VHSL Class 6, finished 20 and 6. Uh, Lost in the state semis, I believe, to South Lakes Heartbreaker. Um, it led for the vast majority of that game. Um, kind of lost on some craziness there at the end of the game. Uh, you talk about the turnover, they lost just an immense amount of talent from that team, an immense amount of experience. Um, so okay, well, they, they lost so much. Why are they number six? Well, they're number six because they return Eli Carroll and Miles Molescu on the mound. Um, because In addition to that, um, Coach Wright does a phenomenal job of getting his guys prepared. Um, and I think he's one of those coaches that he kind of gets the most out of what he has, right? There's a yeah. certain way that they're going to play. They, you know, they kind of always play together. Um you know, for, for a vast majority of the year. Uh, and, and like, they just compete. They just compete and play the game. You got Logan Adams, one of the one of the best hitters in the 757, uh, Christopher Newport commit. Uh, again, you have Eli Carroll, Miles Molescu, Zach Kincaid, Marquis Smith, Jackson Walter, uh, the Bridgewater commit. You know, I think that uh, – I think that – this is a much closer gap as far as the floor ceiling goes. Uh, moderately high floor and lower ceiling. Um, I just think kind of when they show up, it's what you see essentially is what you get. You know what you're going to get out of them essentially every night. Um, but they're going to compete and they're going to stay in game. Jordan? Yeah. Um, I mean, I really think that the way these guys play, the brand of baseball that they play, they're going to play hard. They're going to come at you. They're not going to, they're not going to step back from any challenge. So I just think that's going to be a positive on their side uh, throughout the year because they're going to just going to play with a chip on their shoulder and they who are they are who they are. So um, I think they're going to be pretty solid this year for uh, the spring for Coach Wright. All right, moving to number five, Greenbrier Christian Gators, Visa Division Two. 24 and five record. Um, talk about turnover. Like that's another one. Um, but they do have some solid pieces to kind of step in there. Um, and you so see, you're about to, you're about to let me forget. You're about no, to let me forget. Yeah. You are. Are. I, I <laughs> it. Um, we're going to touch on the arms first. Uh, you have Hunter Langston who has made some really nice gains on the mound. Uh, through some through some quality innings for Greenbrier last year, will obviously have a much larger role this year. Tucker Roop, um, just a competitor on the mound, left-handed hitter, uh, and then you have Jackson Oconquo, um, the ODU commit. We had him a few weeks ago. I want to say Jordan, he was up to 90, 91. I been ninety one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so upper eighties. We'll touch a 90, maybe touch a 91. Big physical kid, two-way talent. Um, those are a couple of the arms. You, I think you had some question marks in the arms department after you go through, uh, after you go through Hunter and after you go through uh, Tucker and Jackson. Um, you have some younger guys who maybe haven't thrown uh, a ton for them, but have, have been there, have been a part of the program. Um we have some names like Blake Thomas and Ryan Watson in that 27 class. There's a new face incoming. Again, don't want to get too deep into uh, newer faces just because we don't know how those guys are going to be utilized and, and to what in, in what capacity. Um, but I think I think arm wise, they they turn over a lot from last year, uh, but they do have some returning pieces who can be huge for them. Uh, then we go to the hitters department. 
There's Thomas Conrad, uh, VM Alchemist, Ryan Watson, the physical 27, uh, who played a you know kind of big role and consistent role on uh, on varsity last year. Uh, and here's Jackson Aconquo. Again, big physical, uh, big physical hitter uh, and, and two way talent and ODU commit. Jordan, what are what are the give me give me the good and the bad? Well, I, I will say some of the good is um these guys that they return, they're older guys. Uh like Conrad Langston or Conquo Roop, like they've been there. They know what it takes to win, uh make a deep run, just compete. Um, so that's a positive. Just a, uh, one of the negatives thing to look out for is just that um, you turn over a lot from that offensive line. They had very strong offensive lineup. They graduated some key pieces. Um, so just replenishing that depth, trying to find those next guys to come in, uh, be productive in that lineup. I think that's something to really look out for. Is the question mark? Yeah, I, replacing. Uh, and, and I don't know who. I'm sure they have somebody. But I don't know who um, is going to replace Urbaniak behind the plate. Um, such a key, such a key for them. Um, production. I mean, hitting a leadoff spot, left-handed hitter with some juice, locked things down behind the plate, was a leader. Um, so I think it'll be big for them to figure out who is going to who's going to fill that spot behind the plate. Because as we know, like up the middle of the field is where they lost a vast majority. Like the outsides, the corners. Um, they, they retain a lot of that, um, but you have Peyton Shipman, uh, you have some of their infield talent, you have Mikey Urbaniak, um, you lose, uh, Braden Pendleton, RDR, right? RDR, yeah. Um, so you, you lose a lot up the middle. Um, so just strengthening the middle of the field, uh, which we all know is very important, uh, at, at every level of baseball. Moving on to number four. Cape Henry Collegiate Dolphins, Visa Division One, twenty-two and six last year. Um, they did not bring home the state championship last year, but coming off of two state championship titles uh, in what twenty-three and twenty twenty-two. Um, we talk about a team who lost a lot. Jordan, what what did they lose from last year? I mean, you missed the obvious big piece. You lose Tanner Shadle, um, big physical guy, two ways to tan out for them. That was um, phenomenal for them. So that that's someone that you can – you have to replace those innings. You have to replace that power bat in the middle of that lineup. Um, but, I mean, I do think they bring back some young talent um, on the mound offensively that can, you know, kind of cover that up and just find a way to win. Um, so I just think these younger guys that uh, – like Chris Martinez, he's going to be in a big role at the top of that lineup. Um, Noah Hummel's going to be asked to be a big guy on the mound for them. Um, so those guys going to have to step up with those upperclassmen that they have um, to be part of the big success at the end of the year, hopefully. Got to replace a lot of offense at the top. I mean, in, a, in, a, in addition to Shadow, you lose Jensen, you lose Andrew Hart, both who had really good years for Cape last year. Um you know, obviously you don't wish anybody to have an injury or anything like that, but they had an injury on the mound with a senior arm last year. I think that kind of forced some of those arms like Noah and Ryan Hummel to throw a few more innings. Copeland Smith threw a little bit. Trajan Taylor threw some. Um, so you got into that staff a little bit deeper, which may not have been a huge help last year, but I think it'll be a huge help this year. You have the guy who sets the table at the top with Reed Downs, um, just bat to ball, scrappy, you know, kind of kind of tough out, um, you know, just sprays it around, just contact guy, can run. Uh, Noah and Ryan Hummel, and then obviously on the mound and at the plate, um, Colin LaBelle, Chris Martinez back to shortstop. Um, so you return some of that in the middle of the infield. Um, I think that, uh, you know, we looked at it and I was like, man, like, I don't even know. I mean, we had obviously we were gonna probably they were probably gonna be in here somewhere, but maybe not this high. And I think because we were like, all right, so much with Shadle, so much with Hart and Jensen, um, like there's no way they can feel that. And you look at it, and you're like, all right, Hummel was pretty good for him last year and played a ton. Ryan, 
Uh, and Noah played a ton and had his, you know, one game, I think he was like three for four when I saw him. And the next game he threw a few innings. Um, and then LaBelle's coming off of a really strong spring and summer. Um, and then returning Martinez, who has been really good. You know, it's just he's kind of he's a little bit of right handed uh, read downs, maybe with a little more impact um, and play shortstop, you know, contact driven, sprays it around gets on base, can run. Um, and, and you know, outside of La, – like, LaBelle's really, really good. I don't know if they have, like, an elite shutdown arm, but they are really good through their first three, four arms, um, even, you know, a little bit deeper, maybe even a five. Um, so they may have the most arm depth in the 7-5-7, seven, seven, I think. I think they have the most arm depth, which we all know that wins games. Um, and see, look at you. You, you were going to let me – I'll tell you, like, oh, I'm not going to let you forget. Yep, here we are. Um, so that was Downs, and, and there's Martinez. Um, video of Ryan Hummel here. Um, you know, definitely have some offensive talent on there. And then we roll the arms with Colin LaBelle. That was at Norfolk Academy last year. Really strong start. Faded a little bit later. Um, it was late in the year. There's Noah Hummel, the Navy commit. Um, he, he can be a tough look. I know I heard kind of some uh, uh, really kind of some rave reviews on him um, from this past weekend when he threw at Ironbridge on Sunday. Uh, the team that he faced was, was pretty impressed. Um, so, again, they have plenty of arm depth, uh, offense, the catching position. Um, I imagine Dabrinsky is going gonna, is gonna to factor in there. Um, solidify the catching position and, um, you know, just continue to build on the offense. All right, moving up to number three, the Cox Falcons, the Falcon boys, VHSL class five, 17 and five last year. Um, ran into the to you know, we talked about Ocean Lakes, but we ran into, they ran into the buzzsaw that was first colonial, um, you know, last year. Uh, first colonial going on to win the state title in class five. Uh, Cox, they return Christian Dewey, Trip Fazen, uh, Alex John, MJ Lemke, Connor Worth, James Godfrey. Um, they they have some guys who uh, who maybe have been Coblock. They have some guys like Cole Bradshaw who didn't get a ton of time last year, got some time but I think will be a huge factor this year for them. Um, Jordan, what do you think? I'm going to play some of these. What do you think are uh, – give me the good and the bad for Cox. Well, obviously they lose Jay Colucci. Uh, that was a big, big, big arm for them. He pitched in their big games. Um, so replacing him is going to be a key thing for them. Um, and obviously losing Irby. Um, and the White brothers as well. Um, they they were big, significant players for them last spring. So replacing those guys can be huge. But I mean, they have some talent there. Um, obviously, I'm um, in that lineup that's still there and be able to help them compete. Um, Connor works gonna be a big guy for them up the middle at the top of that lineup. Uh, being a senior leader, that big leader up the middle. Um, so he's gonna be key. Um, just some of those younger guys, those 26 and some of those 27s step up as well. Um, that's gonna be key to look out for. Um, but I mean, there there's still talent up and down this uh, lineup where uh, they can still make a deep run this year in the beach. Yeah, I uh, like you said. I think the biggest thing is the arm stuff. They're going to figure out the offense. They have enough pieces there um, to figure that out. But losing <clears throat> losing Colucci um, is is big there. I uh, I just I just think that's that's probably the biggest thing that they have to get over especially with looking at, you know, who uh, who else is in Class 5 that they're going to have to uh, compete with in order to get out of that region. Uh, number two, Ocean Lakes Dolphins, 17-7, and seven, VHSL Class 5. They got on an absolute heater at the end of the year last year, um, making a run to the state tournament. Uh they return Austin Crew, Daniel Hamilton, Trey Hamilton, Ryan Gochio, Turner Kuhl, Ro Rowan Powers, 
uh, along with some others. Um, those are kind of some of the main ones that they return. Uh, Jordan, we saw Ocean Lakes quite a bit last year, and we never ran into Rowan Powers. Um, I don't know, like I don't, I don't want to speculate, but I don't, I don't know if we just just so happened to miss him in the four or five games that we saw of them, um, or if if he was a little bit dinged up or what was going on. Obviously, he threw some this summer. We saw him multiple times. Um, a recent made his made a commitment recently, uh, and. I think the biggest thing here is they return they return the middle of the field, uh, you know, for the most part. I know Turner Kuehl, uh started to play a little bit more, more middle for them. Uh, Gochio behind the plate is enormous. Um, maybe like, well, yeah, I'm just trying to like glance over it. It's like two of the best outfielders in the seven five seven, and Austin Crew and Trey Hamilton. Trey yeah. Hamilton is 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 a name to know, and he's definitely trending up and and continues to get better. Uh, I think that's those two crew and Hamilton are huge for them uh, at the top of the order. They have some positional depth. They have some offensive depth. What do you What do you think? Where's Where's the question mark? It's going to be the arms. Um, Daniel Hamilton, twenty twenty seven. He was a big arm for them down the stretch. Um, him taking a next step um, and being the innings filler for them is going to be huge. And then just Rowan Powers, um, just being on the hill for them. Um, I think those two can be very, uh, be a very strong duo for them in Beach. But after those two guys, you got to find those guys um, after them maybe close out a game and just fill some other innings for them. I think that's going to be the big question mark for them. But I mean, obviously, they're athletic, uh, they're scrappy, they have some hitters in that lineup, man, where um, they can be a problem for a lot of the opposing pitchers in the Beach. I think the good part about it is Coach Zell has done such a good job developing arms there for such a long period of time. Um, it seems like every year they're churning out quality arms. Um, you know, uh, Turner's older brother, Max Kuehl, um, left-handed arm who was uh, who was there, I think, you know, overlapped a little bit with, uh, with Dickerson. Um, and they had like three or four arms on that staff. Uh, that, that were quality arms. I think they they figure out a way to pitch and compete every single year. I think the game that I went to see them um, in the tournament, they started another what at the time was a freshman, now a sophomore, um, and just light velo, just threw strikes, spun the breaking ball for strikes. Um, I you know I, maybe not start. They might have started Hamilton and they brought one in in relief. I can't I can't remember exactly the you know, roughly hundred games that Jordan and I get to a piece. They kind of run together at times. Um, but uh, I think that they have to figure out who's their go-to arm on the mound. Um, do they have a shutdown arm? I don't think so. Um, but I think they have arms that know how to pitch or have some feel on how to pitch. Um and I know Coach Zell and, and his staff will continue to develop those guys and they'll get better. But I think that's probably the one missing part. I think they have the offense. I think they're strong up the middle of the field. They have a good mixture of youth and, and seniority and leadership. And they play with some energy. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that Ocean Lakes is, is going to be really solid this year, this year with what they return. Um, and that is why they are the number two team in the East too early preview. Coming in at number one, Jordan, do you want to take the honors? Yeah. Coming in at number one, it's the defending state champions, first colonial, had a 21 and six record. Um, and they return a lot. They return a lot from that state championship team. Um, and they can be, they're going to be a problem in the beach again. I mean, they uh, return Keegan Hazler, JMU commit, um, West Stubby, Lynchburg commit, Kate Howlett, uh, Bridgewater commit. You have the two-headed monster and Aiden Parker and Nick Morlang. And then you have the 2027 Graydon Ambrose played a very key role for them in middle lineup behind the dish for them. Um, so I mean, just naming those guys is obvious talent that they return, and um, it gives them a very good chance to repeat and just be a, uh, one of the top teams in the beach area this spring. You're doing a poor job as my sidekick host. 
because we completely whiffed on Ocean Eye Hitters. Jordan's one job today, his one job was to make sure I played videos. I don't think he knew that was his one job, but exactly. now he does. <laughs> um, so, yep, dropped the ball on the Ocean Lakes hitters. There was Hamilton, and you saw Crew. And I think that's Q, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's Q. Um, and then you have then you have Gochio here. Um, so we just butchered first colonials with with some Ocean Lakes videos. Um, but yeah, I mean they they just first colonial just returns an immense amount of experience from last year's team. I'm gonna go through uh guys who contributed last year for first colonial and are back this year. Graydon Ambrose, Grant Burns, Ryan Dugan, Brady Gavin, Keegan Hassler, Cade Howlett, Jathan Inman, Nick Morlang, Aiden Parker, West Stubby. Off of a team that was 21 and 6 and won the Class 5 state championship, there is not a team in the state that returns as much as they do. I think, regardless of class, maybe Battlefield. Battlefield might have an argument there. Um, but I mean, uh, they might have lost like. Two guys who contributed, the Wilson kid, uh, the like six six arm who's at Hampton Sydney, I think it's Brady Wilson, um, who I was very intrigued with when I saw last year. Um, you know, and and I don't want to say as a Hampton Sydney alum, but as a former student uh and player at Hampton Sydney, um I was, you know, kind of kind of happy to see that 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 the, the the Tigers were getting um, a guy like that that has a potential to be pretty good long term, I think. Um, but outside of him, like they didn't lose a ton. I mean, this is they bring back essentially their entire lineup, and they bring back their two horses on the mound, and then you have uh, then you have Howlett who can throw innings for them. Um, you have a couple other guys who are coming up who can fill some innings. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to argue first colonial is not number one. Uh, I'd really like to hear that argument, uh, from anyone who disagrees with this. This may actually be the only one that we got right. Um, but I, I have a really hard time believing that anyone has any ground to stand on to say that first colonial should not be number one with what they did last year and with what they bring back from last year's team. Um, Jordan, anything to add, uh, to the East top 10? Yeah. Like we went through a bunch of teams and just, it's evident talent throughout the seven, five, seven, and, you know, they're going to play their brand of baseball. It's just different down there at the beach. Um, so, I mean, this is teams to look out for that. That'll, that'll be a problem for each other throughout the spring. I'm excited to get down there this spring. For sure. I think most, most games that we have ever done at the beach that we have that we have ever seen at the beach was last year. Um, we we had a couple people helping us out, and then Jordan and I were down there pretty regularly, um, so it was good. It's it's always fun to go down to the beach area to uh, to watch um, some seven five seven baseball. Uh, like we said before, it's just it's it's, it's different. It's kind of a different brand of baseball. Um, so, Jordan, if, if that's all for you, uh, we're going to sign off here. And, again, this was our high school sneak peek, too early preview, East Top 10. Uh, you can add a couple more words in there if you want to uh, to make it a longer title. Um, but appreciate everybody joining us, uh, and we will see you next time on High and Tight.